That's what we remember to do. I always remember to watch Lex. You just don't like Lex. It's alright. No Lex liker you. What? No Lex liker. Okay. So we finally I watched- I derived your Lex liking abilities. So we finally watched the last episode of season two of Lex. The end of the universe. It ended. Awesome episode. The universe ended. It was awesome. It was actually. Yeah. It was. And the really great thing is, Paul Donovan, uh, creator of Lex and the main writer on this episode, he has a background in physics. I believe he um, I'm gonna move. has he's got some uh -huh. sort of proper qualification. In it. I'm not sure if he was a professional physicist or not, but he put enough stuff that to non-physicists looks semi-plausible. It's it's not like it was technobabble invented by someone who has no background in it. So it's it's enough shit there to make it seem plausible. So actual physicists would be like, actually. That could work. You know, theoretical stuff. I like when science fiction is like that, where it's not just like magic, but with circuits. Yeah. Because some science fiction is like that. Why did that work? Because magic with circuits. Yeah. But yeah, so when last we left, Mantrid was right about to eat the entire universe. And then he did. Except for Howard Stern. Yeah. But for some reason, there's like a DJ and a satellite above the planet being like, hey, friends. So the entire universe has disappeared, but I'm still broadcasting. That's you dedication. Know. You can't stop the signal now. That's so dated. What a dated reference. I, I apologize. I apologize. But no, so basically, they're like, oh, we'll have to stop Mantrid somehow, but we don't know how. And then they find a drone that's partially deactivated, and Stan's like, we'll just fuck around with it, and then... They hook it up to 790 after more drones attack, and they're like, wait a minute, you could become a drone and make more drones, and then slowly but surely we'll win. Somehow. That's the last episode. Just saying. Yeah. Although, kind of, I'm kind of getting, it's good that this was the last episode with Bantrick, because I was really getting sick of the drones. Mantra's awesome. No, I just, I mean, Peter I don't. Peter is amazing. No, I'm not saying that, like, the character or the actor's not, it's just that, the drones kind of remind me of wasps. Like the way they hover and like... It just makes me... Well, there's nervous. no more drones. That's good. I mean, season three takes place thousands of years later. I don't know why. They, they all just go to sleep for ages. Oh, spoilers. Well, yeah, but that's the very start of the next season. It's like, oh no, shit. So that's... Something apparently happened off screen. <laughs> thousands of years passed off screen. Because now I need a Rogue One type film, but what happens between seasons two and three of Lax? As you know... Oh, Laika! The... the, uh, the... Writers remember about Laika, and then she died. Spoilers. Like the real life Laika. The actress died? No, the dog. Oh. Space dog? Yeah. Laika? Yeah, but I was thinking, like, oh no god, the actress died? No, real space dog Laika went into space and uh, totally defeated a robot <laughs> insect human hybrid. Well, actually, I. Not actually, but there's a. Was, no, there was a really great um, children's picture book before I left working at Barnes and Noble before I moved over here called Like It the Space Dog, and it was this really great illustrated version. And then the the author's like, you know, people like to say that Like a died in space, but I envision something else. And then it's like a picture of like some Martians like playing with Like a who was still wearing a spacesuit with like the thing on Mars or another planet. And I'm like, oh, I want to believe that too. No, it didn't happen. Though. Everyone knows Laika was kidnapped by aliens and therefore, and then was given human level intelligence by those aliens and then convinced a bunch of other humans to come into areas so they could steal their body parts to give them all human life intelligence, you know, in utter revenge for the space race. That happened in a Sixth Doctor Big Finish really? adventure. Yes. That probably did though. It was like a bunch of a, a, a animals that were sent to space who had been genetically altered and surgically altered by aliens to feel human intelligence getting revenge on the, on the human race by taking their body parts and improving themselves with them. I'll take that. It's like also giving themselves human vocal cords and human brains and everything. It's like awesome. But yeah, so like as Pod was damaged, so she goes on a suicide mission with all the 790 armed drones against Mantrid and she nearly wins before being destroyed. And Kai has to break it to Stan. Uh, you know, she went on a suicide mission, right? Oh, well, she did. Oh, I'm sick, I'm sick. Hmm. I was in... Beethoven's treasure tale. This is a new low. 
He was too. He was though. He yeah. was. Yeah. I haven't watched it, but she has. But yeah, isn't it basically like The Goonies but with a dog? Yes. Mm. It's like the seventh Beethoven. Movie. It's got Jeffrey Combs and Colin Mockery and Stanley Tweedle. It is amazing. And Udo Kier. And isn't aren't they like on their twenty third Beethoven at this point? Like, the, like, how many dogs have played Beethoven? That I don't know, but I think there's been like nine films. Although only the first five are one canon, and then the rest are another canon. <sighs> there's an actual Beethoven canon. I, you want to know? You know what has a canon that amazes you? The Air Bud series has a canon. Wait, well, who are you, Philbrain, Lupo? Why are you? What, what is this obsession with like really bad animal doll, animal movies for kids? I've only ever seen like two Beethovens. The first one and Treasure Tale. I only watched Treasure Tale because Combs. I just looked up its Wikipedia. Oh, you article. made it sound like you you portrayed it as though you'd seen them all. No, yeah. and uh, the Air Bud ones. I've watched a handful of them because one day you were at work and I was lying watching Netflix and I was like, I feel like watching these things. Oh fuck! I don't like animal movies for children because it's just. I don't know. I mean, I know that animals are highly trained. Like, I mean, for Christ's sake, just to, like, you know, helper dogs and working dogs for the disabled and stuff like that. And, and animals are capable of amazing things. But, like, there's always the point in the movie where, like, the children are like, oh, no, we must hide this super intelligent, highly trained animal from the adults. And they dress, and it's usually a monkey, too, and they dress it up in, like, baby swaddling clothes or, like, as a toddler. And, like, everyone is fooled. And they're like, wow, what is this extremely hairy child that you have? Or, gee, why have you dressed up an animal in human swaddling clothes? No. No one ever says that. The kids, like, get away with it. And it just pissed me off when I was little. I was like, that's not realistic. Fuck you. It's a fucking monkey. You're gonna get Ebola. I don't like animal movies. Sorry. So, Man Trade is very... Okay, the, the legs crew, crew work out that if they stick 790's head on an arm... That it's, that it's a powerful arm, and so then he starts building replicas of himself to defeat the, the drones. My arm is a drone. And then, so they, they're winning then, and then what? they... What? And then they go down, they find Mantrid sort of where Mantrid is, because Laika can sense his dreams and Mantrid shit. Mantrid Prime. And, uh, finally, after Laika gets defeated by Mantrid, uh, the Kai comes up with the great plan, which we mentioned earlier, the... The, if you squint, the physics pro probably maybe sort of works a bit. He's like, quickly, ish. move to the center of the universe as fast as possible. So, like, basically... There is no center of the universe. Although, I suppose if you actually I, have... There's a like gravitational... If, if you've either. mapped the... In well, the gravitational would depend on where the mass is. Um, I suppose if you've, if you've actually mapped the entirety of the universe, you know, in, you know obviously not... Maybe Lex can do that. Yeah, in the, in the Lex universe, I, I assume that they've... Mm. Not the entire thing, so maybe there could be a center, I, though I doubt it. I don't think it works like that. But basically, so all the mantra joins, a million, million, billion, gazillion, like basically most of the mass of the universe is following them, and then they stop, and the momentum's like, whoa, and then the universe collapses. Yeah, because it's all in the center suddenly. Although, strangely enough, you all these things follow them, and you still got stars in the background. Yeah. Although that's totally more mass as the mantra drones approaching from very far away. And so, they're ready to die, and then they don't. When I come through a wormhole, and they're, they're like, like, Oh, because we've got another season. <laughs> we must have been renewed. <laughs> da -da 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 -da. And then they all go to bed, but apparently Mantrid's little brain cube hijacked one single drone, and he's choking Zev to death, and the ghost of, like, a... Sounds weird to say. Wakes up Stan, and she's like, Stan! Zev is in trouble. Oh, she's interested. I wouldn't say ghost. More, more like she put part of herself in his subconscious. But I don't know why it woke him up. No. And so they go and they beat him up. Well, they beat up the drone, and then Zev steps on his cube and crushes him. And they're like, "Well, I wonder what adventures are in store for us next." A very self-contained one. Mm. That is probably the best season of Lex. Really? Yeah. Yeah. It's very self-contained. It's it's like it's only like. 12, parts, 12 episodes long, but it's one single thing. They're stuck in one place doing So the it's thing. one arc? Yeah. Okay. So there's none of that, huh, somebody, w one of the cast wants to have sex, so they go to a planet, and they decide not to leave anyone in charge except 790, or Kai, or something, and everyone beams down to the planet, even though it was really bad, or takes a ship down to the planet, even though yeah. it's a really bad idea. And somehow the Lex gets stolen. Yeah, it's, uh... 
Wah. The second season had a lot of like weird Planet of the Week, while well, this season three has none of that. So it's an archive reflection. Which, you know, it's a little bit unbalanced in that way, but there are a lot of weird places they go to. It's just these planets are, these places are cities on the planets of fire and water, which are analogies for heaven and hell. Oh, okay. Allegory, sorry. Do they actually for come out and, and say, hell. gee, it feels like we're on heaven and or hell? No, but it's very clear what's going on. I mean, uh, Stan it's a metaphor! Stan dies and gets put on trial and gets sent to hell and then they have to rescue him. Uh, they come across, they find Kai's, Kai's consciousness in heaven ready to be reborn into a, into a life of paradise because he, you know, from when he died, because you, you live on the planet then you die and then you go back to their archive and they rebore you, burn you. They rebirth you in this place of happiness or torment. Depending oh, on so they took him away from being in the queue for eternal happiness? No, no, no. K Kai's actual soul is there, ready to be reborn again, because he's he's still there. Oh, they find his soul. Okay, so yeah. he's uh, that's true, he's separate from And they thing. find... Uh, like, that's grand, I'll see you later, soul. They find Shlemmy, who raped 790, you know, at the back of the yeah. They find him. He's been accidentally filed in heaven for some reason, and he doesn't feel like he really just belongs there, so he becomes a recurring character. You've got... Um, does Jigarata turn up? Can't remember. Don't think so. No. Um. You've got uh, Mantrid is is found again, sort of wandering. Ah, Mantrid. He's wandering the tunnels of the hell part, basically being insane. No. That's his torment. That was well, he did in the show. So. so it, it, it season three is great. I really wish other shows would do something as experimentally weird as it. So it's taken what, like two and a half years. I will, I will happily watch these episodes all the time. No, I'm just really. But you don't like them. Really, not that I don't like it. It's just kind of like, I guess we could do an episode. It's just, it, it, it's not my favorite show. I'm sorry. What am I going to say? It's not like it's you know YouTube. We watch YouTube every night when we eat dinner. My favorite show is YouTube. What? Your favorite show is YouTube. I like no because it's like we we'll watch you know Cracked or like. 18th century cooking, or like, you know, random, like, did you know a thing? Let me tell you about the My thing. My other favorite show is HBO. But no, I promise we will finish this show eventually. Still thinking what should we should do next. You know, you, you, make, you make blinky eyes at me, but you know what I could do? What I could insist? The next show that we do is the entire run of Dr. Quinn Medicine Woman. I would just insult it the whole time. Yeah, that's true. I, I really liked it, though. I used to watch it, like, every Saturday when I was a kid, because I had no life. I was like, oh, that's time for Dr. Quinn, medicine woman. I could be a doctor if I wanted to. Oh, wait, that involves blood and pus and puke. And I don't know, that's not true. <laughs> Plus, your name's not Quinn. No, but I mean, like, I could be, you know, I was like, oh, her dad really wanted a son, so he named her Michaela. And I'm like, oh, that's so weird. It's like Michael, but it's a girl, but then that's a really common name over here. Like, I have a friend named Michaela. But, no, but it was like, oh, you know, she... They were women... all born after Dr. Quinn Medicine Woman. No, but, like, you know, women couldn't do stuff back in the day, but she did. She became a doctor, and then she went out to the West, and then she just, like, broke all their stereotypes and stuff, and then had, like, a really weirdly romance novel-esque thing going on with basically a Fabio stand-in. Slash Dances with Wolves. And she became a mum, because of course she did. So yeah. I... But yeah, enough about Dr. Quinn so on, so. So that's been Lex, season two. I wonder what season three will hold for us. Awesomeness. Yeah, well, we'll see. Now, I promise we will get back on a schedule of actually doing this now that, you know, the term's starting again and I'm in uni, so. Yeah. I don't believe her either. No, I'm pr I promise, I swear, really, I promise it's gonna be the way. Totally get to one eventually. <laughs> Stop it! Don't undermine me in front of the children. I'll see you guys next time. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna cut this off right now, you disbeliever.